the next films we will be looking at this series are five different films two 1927 and 1961's versions of the king of kings and the greatest story ever told now first we'll get into the king of kings it was released in 1927 directed by cecil b demille and stars hb warner as jesus in the book screen jesus by peter malone states that demille was conscience of his humanity, Jesus' humanity, and divinity. Sometimes he would fuse it together. And what he means by this is, during this film, creation of the film, DeMille was cautious of how to portray Christ in this film. He was careful on how he can portray Jesus through film. We don't really see Jesus until about 17 minutes into the film, but as you notice, is more the character of Jesus is silhouetted in say in a very bright light, almost like a halo sort of light all around his silhouette. This could mean many things. Obviously, it could mean that you know Christ is, according to Christians, the Son of God. The an interpretation of he is truly God and truly man. That's probably why Jesus is silhouetted in that halo like light so that could be another thing and also as you watch the film this jesus is portrayed as bible so it's very interesting what jesus looked like in this film and also again he's dressed as the sacred heart jesus so same clothing as the previous silent films same idea so it is very interesting and now the remake made in 1961 was directed by nicholas ray and stars jeffrey hunter as christ and a little known fact jeffrey hunter was 33 years old as the same age as we believe that jesus was during his crucifixion so a note about this film this is the first major film to show Jesus' face in a long time. Like, they never showed Jesus' face in a sound film in ages, and this was the first time ever to see that. And Peter Malone also states in Screen Jesus that this was really the first time a worldwide audience had heard a Jesus character speak on screen. So what he means by that is this is the first time that we ever see Christ, so to say, spoke for the first time in film so it's very interesting that this was the first film to start it all again christ in this film wears white and red robes or he just wears all white robes like in the last supper and this jesus also has a little bit longer hair than the previous films it's very interesting that you know this jesus is more outspoken out there more a little different than what we've you know what previous films have done so the way this christ is portrayed could be a sign that later depictions of christ in films probably took reference from because as you look at later installments of jesus films even just small cameos you notice that all of them kind of look similar to this one so that could be interesting that you know they they have probably taken all the references you know like passion of the christ and jesus christ superstar and so forth and took the reference from the king of kings on how jesus looked how he acted and his facial expression the next f films that really weren't jesus films so to say they were more small smaller roles, but they're fictional biblical movies. The first one is 1925's Ben-Hur, directed by Fred Niblo. And what's interesting about this, you never see Jesus on screen. I'll just say that right there. You don't see Christ on scene. The only depiction you see of him is you only, they only show his hands. They never show the face. They never show the body. They just show the hands. Now, this could be interpreted in many different ways. You know, it could be, as the Bible describes it, you know, Judas can pinpoint Jesus out of the others. No one knows what Jesus' face actually looked like. So we had we probably get that interpretation like, you know, we can't see his face, nor do we know what his face looks like. So it's very interesting on that depiction. This idea went even later into the remake, which was made in 1959, directed by William Wyler. And in this film, it again, you never see Jesus' face throughout the film. You only see, this time, a silhouette of Christ, and only the back of his head, the back of his clothing. But you never see the front, you never see the, the face, you never see any frontal view of Christ. And when Christ is portrayed in that film, he's so distant and far away in the film, you can hardly see him. 
Yeah. Exception to the crucifixion scene when he's carrying the cross. You hardly see his face at all as, you know, he's falling, as he's going, carrying the cross to Calvary. And I would say that in this film, maybe Christ down here was more of a suggestion of his human figure and just an idea of what he may have looked like on his time of earth. So that's another thing that could be really interesting is that this portrayal of Christ in this film and the previous film could have been more of a suggestion of his human figure. And Christ in here is not a major character, but he's definitely an important character throughout this film because of the meaning behind the film. It's a strong Christian film fictional Christian film and it mimics similarities and differences between Ben-Hur and Christ you know temptation struggles and so forth and so on so that's really interesting to see about Ben-Hur now the final film of this video I'm going to talk about is 1965's The Greatest Story Ever Told this was directed by George Stevens in this one Jesus had shorter hair was dressed in all white robes through most of the film and it portrays him as more a little talkless a little more shy and a little more timid than what we would think of Christ in the other films so I don't know what may have been of that maybe because you know again during Jesus' time he was being quiet and hidden about his you know miracles and his you know time on earth and his great you know, miracles he's done so that could have been another thing but we never knew Christ was more out there and spoke but again maybe some of us never thought of him as being shy or timid it made this screen jesus feel a little off-putting and unapproachable compared to the previous films so yeah it, it, these films were kind of like the heyday of the time and you know at the time especially like ben-hur king of kings and greatest story ever told this was at the time where biblical movies were very important very uh, well known during the, this decade and you see it a lot like you get others besides these the like ten commandments and many biblical films throughout this er decade and it's very interesting on how they portray jesus in these many different ways and of how short years these films were created so it really leaves an interesting mark on how they portray jesus especially at this time when you know obviously it's been years later we got technicolor we got color films now so we can actually see jesus in a also color form rather than in the previous films that were black and white that only showed him in black and white obviously and no sound so um yeah there was a huge gap between the 20s to at least the late 50s and early 60s of jesus being portrayed in film so yeah i i highly encourage to take a look at these films and watch these films because they're really enjoyable they're really great to watch and i honestly would recommend them so i thank you again for watching this video um please be on the lookout for my next video i'll be doing more on individual 70s films of jesus's image in film and i know i mentioned that previously in the other video but i didn't realize until now so please be on the lookout for jesus christ superstar that will be the next video on this installment I hope you like this video. Please subscribe, like, and you know, give me a comment. Tell me what you think about Jesus' portrayal in these films. And thank you again for watching my video.